Today on The Breakfast, some members of the Islamic Movement of Nigeria protest and demand the release of international passport of their leader, Shaikh Ibrahim El Zazaki. We'll take a look at the security implication on our polity. Also on The Breakfast, Nigeria took revenge for the previous match and won at home to Guinea-Bissau to retake the lead of the group in the qualifiers of the Afcon African Cup of Nations. We'll have further conversations with a sports analyst. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. So it, it's a beautiful Friday morning and as always, uh, this, this statement, you have people saying, thank God it's Friday, you know, because Monday comes very quick and then Friday is here. A lot of persons anticipated. And so if you're one of them, it's fine. Welcome to the show. It promises to be an amazing time because the lineup is quite interesting. And maybe you're on your way to work. It's fine that you can connect with us via uh, social media platforms uh, we're streaming live on YouTube is at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messier Bopo. Now our conversation starts off with what are people talking about? What are Nigerians really talking about? So we call it top trending. Now first on the list is the fact that the federal government says uh, it will create a portal to engage older persons who wish to continue offering services after retirement. Now, the Director General of the National Senior Citizen Center, M.M. Omokori, uh, you know, spoke at a collaborative meeting with relevant government agencies in the FCT. And uh, the essence of the conversation, the essence of this meeting was known, according to her, she said that the meeting is uh, aim to build a foundation of synergy between the center and its critical partners. And so, yes, uh, she also said that the creation of the online platform is to tap into the potential of all the persons, uh, all the persons rendering their services, especially from the federal service, I mean, federal civil service, and also, you know, local government and what have you. Uh, these, they say they were creating uh, the platform and tools and space for persons who are old and who have retired because you know you already have like a retirement age and who wish to continue to engage and have opportunity to do so uh, render the services or knowledge and what have you and so now if you have retired you have interest in continuing it's not compulsory but it's the fact that this portal is there if you want to uh, have a job uh, then you can go ahead and do that uh, <laughs> you can engage so um that's what that's that's the plan so it's a, a federal government initiative they have a thought towards it but it, it is important to know because nigerians nigerians have reacted nigerians have really reacted to you know this policy now over time i like us to take a breather here like a pause and think about the fact that over time there's been conversation as to whether or not um you know, the government has the interests of the people at heart. Is there a connection between the people, you know, those who are calling the shots, that's the, the elites, and those who are being ruled? So there's always this conversation as to, there's a disconnection between government and the people, disconnection between government and the people. Now, it probably would look like it's something that's very exciting because if you look at it, these persons will have retired. And then sometimes some people say, oh, they get very lonely. You know, there are too many conversations. But hey, let's even look at that. You're creating a platform for, uh, you know, some persons who will wish to. You just make available that, hey, those who have retired from the service can also be part of the service, contribute because they have a lot of experience and whatever you. But I want us to look at the economic uh, export analysis uh, models that have been put out. Unemployment rate in Nigeria has been projected to hit 45% in 2023 and 43% in 2024. Now, it was 20, uh, 33% in 2022 with youth unemployment at over 50%. So uh, you begin to ask yourself, 
what exactly is the rationale of all of this? The Nigerian Economic Summit Group uh, had said that unemployment rate for 2023 is projected at 37%. Uh, you, so we're looking at 17%. Uh, however, I mean, if you look at the number of those who are not employed, we're talking about the youths down. It's alarming. So if you have 50% from 2022, let's even say that we're still in the first quarter of 2023. What's the rationale behind this? Now, these persons are retired. You get to eight and you get to a certain point in your life where you have to just take the back seat and just rest. So what happens to them taking the back seat and enjoying, you know, the benefit of retiring after giving how many years into the service? And don't forget that, you know, you still have the issue of these persons who have retired grappling with their gratuity, grappling with the benefits that should come to them naturally you know, for committing their time, you know, to the service. Now you are saying that you are creating an option where they can say, we want to continue. Why don't you allow them rest? Give them their money, give them their benefits, whatever it is that they need, and let them continue to rest and have, you know, a great time. Uh, so if you also look at the age now, 70, 60, 65, what have you, and juxtapose it with those who are the working age, those who are, uh, you know, you, you, because you need to have, uh, you get to a certain point in your life where the energy is 100, and then you get to a point where the energy is not 100. So why are we not paying attention to the youth? I mean, it's just so, so uh, you know, you begin to think and ask yourself, what's the rationale behind all of this? That you want to, it's not, it's not compulsory, but you're also putting it out there that the people can choose. So why don't you put it out there for the fact that you have 50% of young people who are unemployed? That's a lot. That's, that's, that's a figure that we should go by. And then we ask again, whose interest does all of these conversations and policy reflect? Whether they are thoughts, whether they are collaboration, you ask yourself again, whose interest uh, is this reflecting? I think that we can do better as a people. We need to be in sync, in touch with, you know, the people that we are governing or the people whose interests we seem to be representing a different strata. So, yeah, that's what it is. I mean, you, you don't want to go through the comments, especially when you get on Twitter. You see a lot of Nigerians saying too many things like, oh, really? But we move away from that. Uh, the next on the top trending is that the Lagos state government has filed manslaughter charges against Chrysland School. Chrysland School has been in the news for a very long time and at different you know, times you have Chrysland School being in the news. So the Lagos state government through the State Department of Public Prosecution has arraigned the principal of Chrysland uh, High School, that's in Ikeja because they have their schools in different parts uh, of the state and also you know, most times in some parts of the country. Over the death of a 12-year-old pupil, Whitney Adedira, now the state government has also arraigned the vice uh, principal. I'm not sure you had a good rapport with your principal, vice principal or your principal, and two staff members of the school. They were arraigned yesterday. Yesterday was Thursday on a two-count charge of manslaughter and negligence. You know, they were brought before justice. Uh, the justice and, of course, the judge of the High Court that was in Ikeja. Now, the defendant, however, pleaded not guilty to the charge after it was read to them. It's also important to note that Whitney died on February the 9th, 2023, during a sports event at Agege Stadium. Uh, so the mother of Whitney, which is Blessing Adeyero's mother, had accused Chris Lynn of holding back information on the course of her death. It was reported that she died after the autopsy from uh, electrocution. And it was really saddening, especially, I mean, I was here when looking at the video. There's no way you're, you're not going to break down if you see uh, Deji Ron blessing, talking about, you know, Whitney. It's very saddening. And I'm sure that I'm getting that chill right now as I speak. But um, I think that we have to pay attention to the issue. The Ministry of Education had, however, ordered a temporary closure of the school pending the investigation. And I've had a conversation with those who are stakeholders in that school. Maybe in no time, we'll probably just have them, you know, on the show and that's on the breakfast, you know, share their thoughts as to uh, what has actually transpired. This is what the federal government has done. I mean, I beg your pardon, state government and the school, especially that that's in Ikeja has been 
you know, on hold up until this moment. We can't continue to act in a certain way and expect a different result. It is totally not acceptable. I mean, some quarters will say it's madness for you to act a certain way and expect a different outcome at the end of the day. And uh, Whitney is gone. Could she have been alive? So for Nigeria, because I mean, I grew up in, in, in a setting and a system where you have to literally pray that there be power supply. Yes, you have to ask that. Oh, so you're going to be having a family meeting and then you're pregnant. Can we please pray that the PHE and the, or, you know, NEPA, whatever it is, the nomenclature that will be given at the time that, you know, they provide power. And I ask myself, how do we have to begin to pray for some of the things that we have control over? So, yes, I think that some of the deaths that we have recorded over time in Nigeria, those people who have died because we we're very religious as a people. It's not because they would have died. They probably would have been alive if all things were possible, but most times because of our own contribution, because there's always a human part to every miracle. And so too many persons who have died is not because God wants them to die or, you know, the deity or their family spirit or whatever is chasing them. But it's because if we have done, you know, what is expected, if you act in a certain way, you're almost sure to predict the outcome. And so People have lost their lives. And then we, because we're religious people, then we begin to say, oh, yes, it's the will of God. And those who are Christians who say, yes, Allah has said it. And then, oh, this is what it should have been. But let's even look at the actions, how we have contributed to it. Because if we acted in a certain way, all of that wouldn't have happened. And if you talk about the school, they have a huge responsibility because students, if you have a child in school, it's suspected that they will be taking over from you. And... That shouldn't be an excuse. Crystalline School is very prominent, high uh, school or institution that's highly respected, you know, in Lagos and in different parts of the country. Fingers are crossed. We can not continue to, you know, share thoughts and uh, put our uh, minds and prayers with the family who's lost the child. Whatever the situation is, you have lost a child. You don't even want to be in that situation, and that's what it is. But I think that, you know, government and people, we, we need to begin to take actions. We need to begin to act differently to get a different outcome. And that's why uh, Nigerians have actually reacted, you know, in a different light as to this particular story. So, yes, the next is a fire incident. And over time on Top Trending, we have talked about, you know, fire incident. Uh, there was a fire incident that happened yesterday. Uh, fire had got at the Oluo or spare park markets in Ikeja area of Lagos State, if you don't already know. Uh, it was gathered that the fire incident happened yesterday morning. So while we were here having this conversation, shops containing air conditioners for sale, part of vehicles and motorcycles, among other things, uh, had uh, fire came on it and then you know people lost their goods now uh, traders lost goods what millions of naira to the fire uh, following that particular outbreak but one of the things that we have talked about over time is you know the presence of uh, the firefighters we call it the firefighters because of the movie the movies that we get to see and uh, the fact that we look up to developed countries uh, to formulate uh, the nomenclature or whatever, however you want to call it. But it was reported that many of the Lagos State Fire Services or service and security operative were available. Now, at the time where they showed up is also another thing at the scene to bring the situation under control. This is not the first time. I'm not even sure this would be the second time we would talk about fire and, you know, the incidents in Lagos State or in different parts of Nigeria. Uh, just uh, three weeks ago, we've recorded different fire incidents in the country. But the conversation is encompassing. It's not just limited to, you know, the government of the day or just the, the, the state government or whatever government, government at a different level. It's the fact that we all have a role to play. Now, in most cases, the fire could be an accident. In other case, it could also be an arson. An arson is the fact that someone, you know, deliberately went there, you know, to put the fire, set the fire for whatever reason, which is which has never been disclosed. So there are cases where you have fire incident and it's an arson, or the cases is just an accident. But two things are involved. We say, if it's an accident, how can we prevent the fire? So the question over time is, is this rocket science? Because it can't be tiring that over time we 
it's just three weeks now how many weeks before another fire incident and trust me i'm sure there's going to be another fire incident in the next three weeks or even less now i'm not a prophet of doom but i can say that with our actions and behavior over time we can predict what's going to happen and that's because uh, if we've had a certain incident or occurrence over time, it would have been expected that stakeholders would sit back, have a recount or a rethink of what's going on. Why is this fire incident happening? Uh, could it be because of the structure? Do the people have a lot of information? Can we begin to sensitize ourselves? What's the available structure for us and facilities you know, to help fight the fire in case the fire happens? Uh, how far do we investigate fire situations where we perceive or can allege that you know it's a case of uh, arson so too many issues but our hearts and our prayers goes to those who have lost properties what millions i can tell you i have reported i've been at a scene where a fire happened you don't even want to be there it's really emotional because they will lose properties and at the time where you have a lot of people still very traditional with keeping money people keep their cash you know, money, physical money. And so you could probably have a million, two, two million, five hundred thousand, three hundred thousand burnt by the fire. So what can we do? How can we reduce, you know, this fire incident across the country? Not just for Lagos State. I think that the business of governance is very, very, uh, you know, apt and it, it was captured in the constitution, if you look at it, where it talks about security and welfare of the people, you know, the welfare of the people would be the concern of government. So welfare, it's encompassing. You can't limit it to a certain thing. It cuts across, ensuring that lives and properties are protected. So yes, we have to get back to the drawing board, sit back and hoping that the Lagos state government can do better. Uh, that's the size of it this morning on our top trending. We take a break when we return. Jide Johnson will join us this morning for Off the Press. Please stay with us.